Good morning, my fellow yoga travelers. I'm mighty glad to be alive today, and I hope that you are too, as we continue to live, laugh, love, learn, linger, and live the life we love. I want to talk to you about the importance of memory. First, physical inertia, being relaxed in your body, favors mental passivity, and that's where you become receptive, rendering your inner mind more open to suggestion. But of course the idea is to learn how to give yourself the suggestions and not take the suggestions from other people so you can really tailor fit to what you need to know. And today I want to talk about the importance of memory, planting some suggestions about what your subconscious mind is, how it works in tandem with your conscious mind. And one thing is your subconscious mind can't take a joke. It takes you at your word. So do this really sincerely and get rid of any kind of cynicism or the wrong kind of gullibility, and work the principle. From today on, your memory is going to improve in every department. You will always remember everything you need to know, every moment in time and space. Any impressions that you get will be clearer and more definite than ever before. You'll retain them automatically and with ease. And very soon, your memory will be better than ever it's been before. So, what I suggest is you keep reminding yourself that today I shall be more good-humored, that joy, happiness, and cheerfulness are just as much my natural state of mind as anxiety, depression, pessimism, doubt. And each one of us has the potential to be a center of the will to good, infecting everybody with our own good humor. May that ever be so. Now, I want to talk about the six uh, realms in Buddhist, Tibetan Buddhist thinking. The idea is that each one of us is like a monkey trapped in a house, the house being our body. The monkey only experiences the world through its five senses and thinking mind, but its sense of self is so solid that it's trapped in the house. And when it's trapped in the house, it goes through these psychological stages or moments of perception. And the worst, of course, is what they call the hell realm, which is one of tremendous claustrophobia and aggression, hate. Just everything is a paranoid conspiracy out to get you. So the world's on fire. That's the hell realm. And then there's another realm that's called the hungry ghost realm, imaged by a person with a pinhole-sized mouth and a real distended belly. They're fascinated with how hungry they are, but they can never satisfy their hunger, no matter how much they eat no matter how many desires they have, they take it in, but it doesn't really nourish. Then there's another realm called the animal realm, which is symbolized by the pig, the rooster, and the snake, greed, hatred, and self-deception. But here in the animal realm, you're all instinct. Right? You're not thinking, you're not discriminating, you're just like a pig in mud. You just plow straight ahead, and whatever's there, you just eat it, and that's it. Not a lot of differentiation, or subtlety, or refinement. Then you have the realm of the hungry gods, this is the place where you're striving to become king of the mountain, want to be on top, want to break the record. But then you also have this paranoia, like who's going to upset me, who's going to take over, who's out to get me, who wants my job, and so forth. So there's always kind of looking over your shoulder to see who's next, and you have to defend your territory. Also very, very aggressive. But then there's the realm of the gods. This is where you got your A-game going, and all of a sudden things seem to be working. Everything you're doing is working. So... Who, wants, who doesn't want to stay there? Who doesn't want to have every one of their desires satisfied? But also, that doesn't last. It can exist for eons of time, depending on your karma, but at some point, it isn't timeless. It isn't eternal. And then you fall out of that as well. It's hard to stay on top, right? And then finally, there's the human realm, where all these other five realms, the hell realm, the hungry ghost realm, the animal realm, the jealous god realm, the god realm, they're all part of the human psyche, but there's something different about the human psyche because it has the potential in this rare and precious birth to realize that it is not any of those things and can even let go of its attachment to the human form and discover what consciousness is, or sometimes called the Buddha nature, unobstructed, like a mirror, completely filled with light, which is just another image that you can let go of, but you get the idea. It's open, it's clear, it's spacious, it's vast, 
and it shows you what the truth is. So it is the real, and it's there, and therefore it's the unchanging. And although it's invisible, since this is a journey of perception, still everybody has this as part of their birthright. And in the mandala of the six realms, they have Mahakala, or time, holding the wheel of life in its mouth, just like Cronus in Greek, the father of time, eats everything. And in each one of these six realms, there's a, 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 a Buddha walking out into the mountain, indicating that liberation from these states is certainly possible. But in the human realm is the greatest opportunity to disidentify with the other five realms and then eventually disidentify even with the human realm and find out how is it possible that I'm really the living spirit.